performing, do you ever get nervous? Do I get nervous? Of yeah. course I get nervous. I get nervous every single time. What do you she think farts it is? every time. You know what? She's on probation, That's too. That's why your eyes are always closed. Your is Sorry. waiting for your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you lift that glass, OK? <laughs> it's so, it's it's so, what do you think it is? Is it the It's, it's the true? rush. It's yeah, the yeah, rush. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. especially when you're performing someplace new, yeah. and it's like a new audience, and and what and whatever it's 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 new it's like jumping off a bridge it's you know with a bungee cord i mean yeah. it's like it's going to be a rush and you know sometimes um, i forget that i'm actually you know performing on stage and sometimes i don't get that that rush or get the nerves or whatever, and it's not as fun for me. And because that of that, I don't. Close to retirement. You yeah, well, that. bitch, I need to retire. That's what I do. <laughs> well, the wants... drink is waiting for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> somebody wants to. Oh, that that if, if you um, if you get nervous before a show, it just shows that you care. Yeah, like, you yeah. care about the butterflies the show. are good. And I I keep holding on to that. <laughs> well, I mean, a couple of people care because you guys have millions and millions of fans. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. You are all of you guys. You stop playing all the time. So here's the question. Have you ever gotten anything crazy from a fan that comes to one of you? One of Syphilis. Shows? Herpes. Oh, <laughs> my. That's actually true, probably. You think that's what I love it. about Willem. It's it was really true. true. They gave me three days worth of meds, and I was good. You oh, know my what? God. I'm talking about, like, a gift, a teddy bear filled with something. I got, I, got, I got some fan art that had <laughs> hair weave as the as the hair. It was a, from a boy named Lady Boy uh -huh. in, Ar in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I looked at it, and I said, this is god awful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I took the weave out and I used you it in the use it right here. Yeah. 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 So right. right. Refreshing yeah. the tracks. They've been used. <laughs> um, Actually, the craziest thing that I got from a fan was somebody had packaged up this amazing life size doll, and when I opened it up, it was actually on China. <laughs> um, I okay. It's, I my favorite, was my favorite thing that my fans give me yeah. is when they make art that mm -hmm. this that I inspired, like portraits of myself. It's so cool to see that some like artists. And it doesn't matter if they're like six years old and they're drawing with crayons, or if they're like a really, really talented yeah. Yeah. artist and they do an amazing like photorealistic portrait of me. I just really like to see that when fans have taken the time yeah. to like, mm -hmm. you know, use me as inspiration. I mean, it means so much to me. I actually hang a lot of them in my drag room. Yeah. Like I like to frame them and hang them up. Um, but mostly it's because I like to look at pictures of myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was like, it wasn't a gift that I got, but like a crazy thing that happened to me. I was doing a show and I do this wife, like Stepford wife number and I had these cute shoes that I really loved on. And this guy came to the meet and greet and he said, um, I really want to buy those shoes from you for my girlfriend. And I was like, well, what size is she? He's like, oh, it doesn't matter. I think she'll just like the shoes. And I was like, but I really like these shoes, so I'm not. He's like, I'll give you $400 for them. Oh. And I said, go get those shoes in yes. the back. They need to come out here, those $30 DSW shoes. Oh, I will say, uh, yes, I will sign them here. Take these shoes. That's called a panty sniffer. The first time a fan had my name tattooed on them, it that kind of freaked me out mm -hmm. because they said they had a surprise for me. So I was like, oh, flowers again. Chocolates. And it wasn't gonorrhea. And right? uh, uh, no, these are not Willems. <laughs> we don't share fans. Um, <laughs> just kidding. We just share. We, we share looks. We share looks. So it freaked me out because he said, "Do you want to see? You want to see your surprise?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he lifted up his shirt and it said, "Derek Barry, Britney Spears, Lady Gaga, Divas," because those are the two characters I play in Vegas. I'm like, "Oh wow, that's crazy." Oh, that's he's permanent. Like, he's like, "No, it's not." And then I thought, God, that's not what I should have said. Yeah. And it was only because I had never experienced something like that before. And now I'll autograph people and they go get it tattooed that night or the next what? day. Oh, yeah. There's there fans, fans that have really? their entire leg covered. No, there's a girl that, that has been collecting yes. drag race signatures all over her. I think in her, Denver. Yeah, all over right? her legs. And she had me sign it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't thinking because I signed really close to her. Recruiter. And I was like, <laughs> and big, and, and yeah. I was like, oh, well, maybe I would have moved it a little. Because she's like, she goes, just so you know, it was very painful. But I thought, yeah, box, yeah. I'm pointing to the box. Oh yeah. my goodness. So has anybody else had any strange gig experiences? Yes. I got drugged at a gig. Always. <laughs> By my own band. Are you serious? Uh -huh. Your band set you up? Yeah, but they're sorry now, and it was fun. <laughs> they, they had their eye on me. They said nothing bad would have happened. But I don't work with them no more. I'm in a new band now. <laughs> <laughs> She's but a, a weird guy. Guy. Two new yes. girls. Are we saying that 
like we we're like parallel to the sex, drugs, rock and roll lifestyle. We are the new rock stars. Well, yeah. first of all, we've always been the center of that life. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've always everybody like from the sixties, fifties, seventies. We're always the alternative. We we've always been the center of everybody coming in to get away from the pressures of mm -hmm. ridiculous structured life. So nothing has changed. I mean, and for what, 30, 40 years, nothing has changed. I think we've always been escapism for people. Yeah. And a, a place for you to go to feel comfortable, whether you're gay, straight, bi, whatever, you know you can walk into a gay bar or a gay club and you're gonna be taken care of, people will treat you right. And I've never had bad experiences in places like that, where straight clubs in Vegas, if I go, well, if I go and drag, then sometimes they don't even know because I'm so real. But <laughs> I'm like on the stripper pole flipping my hair. And uh, no, they, I mean, sometimes they don't know. But when I'm a boy, I don't really feel comfortable at a straight club because yeah. it's just not a comfortable place for me. I don't know. Lou, Re Lou Reed said it, take a walk on the wild side. Yeah, that's I mean, kind of the hard us. part. That's a double standard is like, we go to like straight venues and we have to, walk on eggshells, yeah. but like people come into our clubs or our community mm -hmm. and they're just like balls to the wall and yeah. don't give two shits and grab us and handle us however they want to, but let us go to a straight club, anybody from the community, and it's complete opposite. We're kicked out, yeah. we're body slammed. It's really? changing a yeah. little bit. One of the most popular promoters in LA is um, he runs Peppermint right now, and he does Bootsy Bellows. It was a straight night when I went in after Mickey's, and I was full trons, full gig, get up, and I was like, I like this music. And they're like, yeah, that's, it's a straight night. And I was like, yes, it is, and I enjoyed it. And they, they celebrate us. We're a party when we walk in, yeah. I find, more and more. Five, 10 years ago, I was at Shampoo, on Delaware Ave mm -hmm. in Philly, and I was in the hip hop room. I know shampoo, I've been there. I love shampoo. So I'm in that room and I don't exactly feel comfortable, but now I feel great. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I think it's way more accepting. So when you perform, and we are, we've all talked about like the ups of you know being in a gay bar and, and being liberated. What, what are some of the downsides of it? Some of the downsides are poor lighting. Ooh, girl. You know what? China <laughs> ball. <laughs> Poor lighting is a Poor downer. lighting, yes. not enough air it's conditioning. Drag, <laughs> um, I've been uh, working in nightclubs and in venues where the dressing rooms are not good and whatever. Or their kitchens. A or, or kitchen or yeah. someone's office the or the basement. No, but like really, what's a real horror story that most people wouldn't expect <sighs> from your own community? From my own community? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like, you know, Times are times have gotten so good that we forget that we had you know bad times. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of there's a lot of judgment within our community. Really? Yes. Like, really. What you mean? <laughs> what you mean? No, really. I, I really want to know. Like, what um, do you mean? Like, cause when I think about it, you think about everybody is empowering, everybody's having a good time, everybody's one and the same. What do you mean when you say I that? I think it is because. Um, in our, in our community, we all feel so damn fierce yeah. that sometimes we let our own insecurities, like, you know, we project that our insecurities on other people. Yeah. So we start to, instead of instead of being like, oh, I don't know why, like, no one's talking to me, maybe I should talk to other people, it's because, oh, they don't want to talk to me, oh, they're being shady or they're being too cool for, for school. It's difficult because, you know, um, now, because drag has become so popular, um, everyone thinks that, you know, they're an expert. You know, they watched one season oh, yeah. of RuPaul's Drag Race and now they're an expert. And, you know, they, yeah. wanna, they wanna call this queen out for, you know, having a wonky eyelash or having a crunchy hairline. And she probably do have a wonky eyelash and she probably do have a crunchy hairline. You know but I'm not looking at you, girl. I'm not looking at you. <laughs> you know, sometimes like people think that like, oh, because we come from a, a TV show yeah. where we're competing against each other and we're being judged that it, it's okay to judge each other. And you know, we can handle it, yeah, but sometimes it's a little bit extra. We'd rather take their judgment than obscurity. Absolutely, for sure. so how we do we keep ourselves lucky. hopeful in all of that? Just keep working. Well, as a community, aside from just working drag queens, I think we all have our lovely share of working. Yeah. Uh, is putting money back into actual gay establishments and venues. Because a problem with of we love mainstreaming, that's mm -hmm. great, mm -hmm. but it's a false sense of security. Mm -hmm. Just because we're uh, accepted on TV doesn't mean someone will not run behind you and bash yeah. you in the head. Yes. 
Just because we are accepted in one bar does not mean that we won't have issues in another mm -hmm. and our money won't be respected and yeah, yeah. won't be disrespected. So we have to make sure that we continue to, with mainstreaming, put money back into the venues and the, the communities that kept us alive for so long. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with mainstreaming, we, uh, our, our spending power has been diluted. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of gay parties in Vegas that will happen, and nightclubs will open, and then they'll close within a few months. And everyone wants a new place to go, but once they finally have it, they complain about it. Oh, I don't like it. The DJ sucked. The drag queens were bad. Whatever it is, that someone's finding something to complain about. And I, I think, like you mentioned, uh, things are, were so good, and everyone felt like, oh, well, I, I'm a, a critic. I've been to a gay club. I know what they're supposed to look like. It's not in every city. And it, it's sad because I want there to be more gay parties that people can go to and support and, like you said, put money back in the community. But until people actually care enough to do that, I don't know what... Care again. 